Hi guys, welcome to Smooth Workshop. Okay, right. I uh, had a wee problem with my camera. Uh, it's a habit of losing audio, so I'm having to dub over. It's only the second time I've done this. This is take three at me trying to do it. I've had echo issues, so hopefully I've got it this time round. Um, this next section was going to cover me going straight into dress up and paint, um, but I watched a, a video on YouTube last night. A guy called Fox, aka Model Making Guru. Uh, done a build for e-models on a transit uh, where he rusted it up, weathered it up and all sorts of things and he used an interesting technique on there um, whereby he used ordinary kitchen foil and uh, put it onto the transit seats to simulate the old vinyl and everything like that and uh, I'm borrowing his technique but using it for a different method. Now these mirrors uh, previously um, the kit tells you to prep to paint the, the the mirror glass part X11 chrome um, and the surround is X18 semi gloss black and it doesn't really give you a nice glass finish so I'll flick up a quick picture of the before and then I use a technique with some kitchen foil so there's a single mirror on its own before and then I'm going to come across to the one on the right that I did off camera experiment and took me four or five attempts. I'll flick up a wee, once I've shown you this, I'm trying to show you uh, it catching the light here. Uh, it's a more mirror defect. Well, there you go, I've got a wee flash of light and I'll put the picture up of what it looks like. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is a little supplemental, I'll explain the process behind what I did here. And hopefully you guys can pick up on it. It's not going to be a camera angle that's the best for showing you exactly what I'm doing. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I can't do the thing that um, Fox and Tony do where they have the camera right in front of them and they're sort of building the model. But what I'm going to be using is uh, just standard craft PVA glue, hobby craft, other stores are available. I'm not making this video for a company so I can show you what I use. Uh, an ordinary tap water. Uh, my camera is going to be off to the side, uh, but I will show you it right. I've put some into my palette there. I've just put a few drops of PVA and some water and made a really uh, quite a weak, quite a thin solution of PVA and water. And I'm using an older brush um, to apply this. Now I'm going to move this camera across. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing here. Move the camera across to my normal filming position. I appreciate it's not going to be in close-up super mode like uh, Tony and Fox do. But uh, as I say, I, we, we, uh, the screen's too small on my camera. I can't look through the camera and show you what I'm doing. So I'll, I'll try my best to describe what I'm doing. So I'm just loading up some PBA on my brush. Okay, and it's really, really watery. The reason for it being watery is well, there's a couple of attempts I tried earlier without the glue on. Now actually that was to see if the surface underneath it was smooth enough um, and if I had to dress it up a bit more because it has had paint under it so it's not going to be as smooth as if you do it the way I would say you would do it on the fresh plastic before anything went on top of it and I'm just putting a, a, layer, a thin layer of this PVA and water mix on there. Um, this will help adhere the foil just wiping a wee bit of PVA off my brush. That's ah, just an old brush, so I usually use it for cleaning dirt and dry out, so I'm not too worried about it. So, ordinary kitchen foil here. I'll just move this away to the side because uh, I don't want to accidentally dip my hand in the PVA and get it everywhere. <coughs> a handy little stand, this. I'll go into that in a wee minute or two, but yeah. Ordinary kitchen foil here, and what I'm just doing is just placing it on, and with my thumb, Putting some pressure into the mirror. Now the mirror, the way the way it's formed, uh, it has a flat mirror glass and it has a lip going round it, which is supposed to be the plastic part of the mirror. Um, so I'm just putting it in on my thumb to start with, and then with the cotton bud, I'm pressing it in uh, to form the foil into the shape of the mirror recess. And then once I've got that, I'm just pinching the foil around the side to try and help hold that in place while the PVA starts going off and getting a grip of it. Uh, what I do find is a bit of foil is a wee bit long and I'm getting a wee bit of scrunching up at the end here so you're probably going to see me just in a wee minute here yeah I'm pointing at the foil I'm going to go and get me uh, scissors 
and just take that extra big chunk of foil off. The other thing, when you're trying to film foil, it's very reflective, so it catches all the light. Not use one of Fox's terms, not your white balance all to pot and all that kind of thing. I haven't a clue what I'm talking about. I'm not a cameraman. <laughs> But yeah, so I've taken the excess off and I'm going to try and get that in exactly the same place again. Now, if I find I've put a crinkle bit up on a bit that I've already worked, then I'll scrap it and start again. It did take me about three or four attempts to get the other mirror done. So be prepared to redo it. I put some more PVA on just to make sure I'm going to get some adhesion. Foil's cheap, so is PVA. All it's taken is time. So if you make a mistake, don't worry about it. Don't try and fix it, rip it off and start again. So here we go, smaller bit of foil that this time and it's forming in nicely in all the recesses. Just dabbing it to start with to try and get the initial shape. Tweak the foil around the side to try and hold it in place and now what I'm doing is I'm moving from the centre out towards the edges to push the PVA glue out. So there's no lumps underneath. And because I've watered it down, you're not going to get lumps underneath. If you use some like super glue or poly cement or something like that, you're going to end up with lumps and bumps under the foil. So um, water down PVA glue, roughly 50-50 with the water in the PVA. I, I just winged it. Uh, I'm working from the centre out towards the edges. And because the foil's made of aluminium and it's very malleable, that's a nice word, basically means it's easily bent and shaped. Um, Working around with a soft cotton bud, nice clean soft cotton bud, to form it into the inner shape of the mirror recess. So I'm working around all the edges. Uh, top edge, bottom edge, side edge, another edge. But that's it's got quite a sharp edge in there and the soft edge of the cotton bud isn't going to do it. So I've now picked up a cocktail stick, a cock and tail stick as Tony calls them. And ever so gently, I'm working along the extreme outer edge where there is a, an angle between the mirrored glass and the plastic. This is an old cocktail stick. It's not a new one. And I'll show you in a wee minute what I do to help me with this. Because if you press too hard, the sharp tip of this cocktail stick is going to grab the foil. And it's going to tear it. And you're going to have to start again. So just with very, very light pressure movements, um, using it lengthwise, almost like a sculpting tool, um, I'm forcing it into the edges. And then I'm back out with the cotton bud again, reworking it, smoothing it in. Again, working the glue from the centre to the outside because we don't want any lumps under it. You don't have a perfect mirrored finish on the foil that I used anyway, because it's, it's just cheap stuff. But I'm hoping it's going to simulate a mirrored glass or give more depth of reflection than what the, the chrome was. And I'm back in again with the cocktail stick. Just gently, gently working around the edge. The other thing that's good with this is it, it, it gets it ready for uh, where you want to cut it with your craft knife. You could form it like this and take it off and then cut it with scissors. Um, I kind of did that a wee bit with the first one, but I'm trying to do this in one go this time. So no, I'm not perfect. Um, although this particular one went great. Um, I had, uh, I think it was three or four attempts at doing it on the first one. Um, just to see if it was actually worth doing. Uh, once I found out it's, it's given me a kind of result that I want, I thought I'll share the info with you guys because some of these early kits or even some of the, well, what I'm explaining there, uh, I'll go back on to that in a minute, is I've got an Exolite uh, craft knife. I've just put a number 11 blade in there, exacto. Uh, you want it to be extremely sharp. So I've took out my normal sort of uh, taking off the nibs knife back. Um... Yeah, lost track of where I was and what I was trying to tell you about there. Oh, I'm explaining about the stand there. Uh, this is one of these helping hands. It's got two crocodile clips on the end and it comes with a mirror and everything like that. It's got a nice heavy weighted base. So it's going to help me hold the part 
whilst I work on it. It might not give, be the best angle for you guys, but I'm sorry about that. Uh, plus, I'm short-sighted, so I actually have to take my glasses off for this because I'm working really close with it. So, very, very, very gently with the tip of the blade. What I'm doing here is, because there is an angle on it and the edges around the glass, I am following that angle that I did with the cocktail stick. Now, I'm putting slight outwards pressure against the outside of the part here. And that's to try and stop me slipping into the middle. I'm using the outside edge of the mirror frame as a guide. Because um, it's also easy to make a tiny, tiny wee sideways movement if you aren't holding pressure against the side of it. And it scratches the, the mirror glass and you have to start again. Uh, which was one of the one of the, t the reasons that I had to scrap two of the previous attempts. I just wasn't careful enough with the craft knife, and as soon as you've got a score on it, it doesn't look like a glass anymore, or a reflector at the back of a mirror. So carefully, carefully. Basically, what I'm doing here is I'm not trying to get full depth cut. I'm scoring the surface very, very lightly. I've got very light pressure on there. I'm using my left hand on the bench. And my right hand le uh, leaning on my left hand as a steadying medium. So that I've got as much control as I can possibly get. Um, I know Tony, is it Tony? Not Tony, Fox. has a tendency of jabbing and stabbing himself. I'm quite steady handed. Uh, and Tony hates people cutting towards themselves. I find I have more precision doing it this way. Um, I also, because I've been a mechanic, uh, I've got calluses in that in my thumbs, so you might see in some of my videos my knife action, you might go, oh no, he's going to cut his thumb, I've got really thick skin in my thumbs, so if I do slip with a knife, generally I'm not working with as sharp a blade as this, when I'm working on my models, I use an older blade, because I'm just trimming, and I use a pincer action towards my thumb, um, right, so what am I explaining here, absolutely no idea. Yeah, possibly about me having to move the workpiece about to suit my eye. Because it's so shiny, it's actually quite hard even for me to see to the naked eye where exactly I should be putting this blade. Uh, I'm also positioning it so that I can get the pressure on the outside of the mirror to give me a guide. Uh, I'm also saying there that uh, I didn't manage to get it exactly like an exact fit of the mirror. Some of the foil does go up the sides, uh, but I'll address that later. But it's basically try as long as I get the main bulk of it flat and trim back as far as I can, I'll, I'll address that later. So now I'm coming into the corners, which is a bit more tricky because this is where it's more likely to tear up. So just gentle, gentle pressure. And again, I'm just kind of scoring it on the first way round. And the second one, uh, second pass, I'm getting a bit more penetration, in it, possibly in areas actually cutting through the foil itself. So I'm just basically swinging the workpiece around to suit me so it catches the light so I can see where I'm putting the blade. Uh, I found that the most tricky part because all you're doing is looking at loads of reflections and trying to see the hard angles of where you want to put the blade. Very difficult. What am I doing now? Right, okay, so I'm just reworking this in with the cotton bud now. After I've scored it and everything, I'm hoping that me going in gently, if any of it has pierced through, it's going to help with the separation. And again, the cocktail stick around the outside edge. Um, on the scores, and it might help split it. A bit like if you score a bit plastic, and then you snap it along a score or score a tile. That kind of idea. A wee tip I did do was I tapped the end of the cocktail stick on the bench a couple of times. You maybe seen that a bit earlier on. That was just to take the, the, the sharpness off. So I'm peeling the foil up here, getting ready to see what's what's cut and what's not. Holding the mirror part in with a cotton bud. Uh, just to see if I managed to get through the foil. What bits I still need to cut. And I've managed to get a couple of bits away, so I'm just trimming this excess off so I can actually see what I'm doing and maybe give you a better view of what's happening here. 
So that first bit I've managed to get cut round and it's perfectly formed in and I'm happy with that. But I haven't quite managed to get full depth cut on the other bit. So I'm just reworking it again with the cotton bud. And uh, steady, steady hands time and it's at the corners it's grabbing. So I'm just very, very, very gently. Trying to get the final cut through. And using the cotton bud. Sorry about the angle guys, but using the cotton bud so that I can see what I'm doing. I don't really want to be going over this and over this and over this all the time. Now, there was one wee raggy bit at the bottom. So, I'm pushing it. It's a bit excess, actually. It's not actually um, ragged into the, the, the mirror surface that I've got. But I'm just pushing it in as hard as I can with the cotton bud. Smoothing everything out. And cocktail stick again. Force it into that edge. Because that's the bit that I want to be cutting along. So you can't really see what I'm doing there, but I'm just putting the cocktail stick along. And then I'm going to come in um, at a 90 degree angle to the mirror. And try and trim this little bit off. That's been a bit of a pain. Sorry if you can hear all the traffic in the background. I'm dubbing over the top. And all the school buses are going past. Right, so that's that done. It's not perfect. Um, it does look as if it's got a wee nick out in it. But some of the you've got like the flat bit in the mirror and then you've got the, the lip edge some of the foil has come up onto the lip edge but I'm going to be putting a coat of clear across the top of that and then I'll redress that with paint so I should be able to make that look like one continuous black line and take it from there I'm not going to excuse me got hiccups now I'm not going to worry about a small small nick out um, it's going to look far, far better than it ever did with the, the Chrome X11. And I'm just trying to show you that uh, it's coming up onto the actual edge there. A, a real mirror glass wouldn't curve up brown like that, but I can redress that with, with paint later on because that's what I had to do in the first place when I painted my, uh, hand painted the Chrome on and then uh, went round the edges with the, the X18 to make it look like the plastic surround and I'm just really really poking things into corners and trying to get it down the best I can so when I go over with the clear coat I'm just having a wee drink of juice here if you're hearing the hissing <laughs> um, when I go on with the clear coat that it looks like there's been a mirror glass added to it and the foil is going to do the reflective back part and the clear coat on the top should hopefully simulate the glass. And I'm quite happy with that actually. Um, now what I'm doing here is I'm just wiggling these about to try and let you see if it catches the light. See if you're getting a reflection like a mirror would do. I don't have a zoom function on this camera so it's just kind of like, look, isn't that shinier and catching the light more than what the paint did before? Um... And I think that's a far better finish than what I would have got. Although it's not finished yet, there's a couple more stages. I'm just smoothing things off here. A couple of more stages to go in that to, to tidy them up. But uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that. Now, you're all going to scream. This is what I'm going to use to clear coat it. Pledge multi sulfurous Wax, formerly known as Clear, or Future, for my American friends. Uh, I could use something like Alclad Aqua Gloss, but I mean, uh, this stuff goes on real easy. Self-levels, real easy. Smells nice, easy to clean up, uh, and that's why I'm using it. And it's a really, really small area, so yeah, I'm going to use something you use for keeping your floors clean. And a lot of people scream at it and go, it's horrible. But it's ideal for wee things like mirror glasses, dipping canopies, stuff like that. Um, I'm just, I think I'm just going like, oh, this is, oh, I'm explaining about, you know, after that, I'll, I'll touch up round about the mirror with a black. Um, instead of using that, I think I've got a far better finish. I'm really quite chuffed myself, and it's all down to Fox. Me watching one of his videos last night and going, aha, I could use that for this. 
I actually posted on his video saying, have you ever tried doing it for that? Because he did mention in his that he had mirrors on his transit and they didn't have any decals for it. So I've, I've put a post on his saying, oh, have you tried doing it for mirrors? Well, here's me doing it, Fox. It works. It's not brilliant, but it works. Um, so I'm really happy with that. Really happy with that. Um, that's just a wee supplemental on doing the mirrors. So I'm probably just going over myself again saying, right, now that's on, I'm going to let the PVA dry. And then I'm going to go over with it. I'm going to do it in the airbrush rather than brush painting it to give me a nice even mist. Uh, and then when that's dry, I'll touch up the edges with the X18. Um, right, I'm, I think this bit, I'm actually going on to right. So this wasn't what we planned to do in the build, but uh, it was a supplemental. Um, my forks, right, they've had two days to dry. Uh, it's been two days since my last video shoot. And I just went over the, the Tamiya X1 with a buffy stick in a couple of places and buffed it up. Um, so hopefully that's going to give me the, the the base that I need for going on with the chrome. Uh, so the next video, what I'm going to do first is, a, that's our two days to dry, we're going to clean this up, we'll do that on camera, uh, see what finish we've got. And I've got all my other stuff on cocktail sticks over there, ready for the primer coat, so it's just this bit, and then uh, after that we'll put the chrome, the chrome AK, Extreme Metals, onto the forks because that will give time for the primer to dry and hopefully by the time I've done the forks the primer will be dry and uh, I'll be able to go on with the top coat. Well that's the plan anyway, as we know things don't always work out and I put a wee supplement on here so I hope you enjoyed it and in the next clip we will be redressing the part. See you later, bye. Hey guys, welcome back to Smooth Spot Shop. Right, hopefully my audio issues are fixed. Um, I did a little supplemental there on uh, how I got on with the mirrors um, and I've totally lost audio. Don't know why my camera does it, but it does. So moving on to what I said I was going to be doing. Um, right, you'll remember in the last part, I'm just going to move the camera up a little bit. Uh, pointy stick, pointy stick. Right, there was an area on here that had a low part, so I used some Perfect, perfect plastic putty. Bit of tongue twister. Um, to dress it up. So it's had two days. So what I'm just going to do now is see how well this stuff sands and what sort of finish I've got. So I'm just using a 220 grade uh, UMP thinnest stick. A dish towel on my lap there. Just to take the the worst of it off, which I think I have got. I'm doing it by eye. Right, a wee bit more at the top here. Okay, right. So I've got the worst of that off, and then I'm going in with the buffer stick, and I'm going to. Do a bit more of a fine sand on it. Uh, I'm hoping. You're actually seeing another couple of white spots coming up there. They were actually low points, but had been filled with the various primers, etc. Um, and I'm hoping that after all this, all the sinkage parts and stuff will disappear. And we'll have a lovely, lovely finish. For the top coat to go on. But I won't really see that until the primer goes on. It still needs a little bit of work to my eye. You're not picking it all up on camera, but, but I'm not going to go on with any coarse stuff. I'm just going to keep going with this fine buffy. Probably hear it squeaking already. Going in with a fine buffer. That's a really, really fine, fine, fine grade. It's something like 3000 grit or something like that. To my eye, I can still see a bit of a difference. 
but uh, if I can get that as smooth as I can, the primer that I'm going to be using has a self leveling quality. It's nice and thick, although I'll put it on in a light coat. Um, but if you watch my earlier video, you will see that I used it as a filler. And I used it as a filler, and it's quite good at that. So if there's a slight imperfection, I'm hoping that the primer catches it. And I don't have to spend ages and ages filling this in. But that that filler seems to have caught that bit that was a bit low. Um, I'm not actually sure there if we're going back onto the black primer now or if we're actually going back onto the the plastic. Not worried because we're repriming it. Yeah. Could do it with wet and dry and stuff, but this buffer stick is, is fine enough to allow it to do what I want it to do. So I'm hoping when I go over with the paint this time that uh, this is all going to be nice and smooth. So I'll, go, I'll take one of my wee cocktail sticks with a crocodile clip on the top. Where am I going to get a hold of this? Underneath where it isn't going to be seen, I think. Or is where I had it before. Yeah. So I've dressed it up. And hopefully that's enough. So I've got everything sitting there. All on cocktail sticks. Ready to get painted. Uh, and I'm going to go across the spray booth and I'll just cut this now. Uh, go across the spray booth and we shall fling a coat of primer down on it and hopefully start getting somewhere. So, see you in a minute. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back. Right, you can probably see in my spray booth there that I've got my mirrors sitting. Uh, I put a wee clear coat on them off camera. Uh, and then I cleaned up my airbrush. So, um, stuff I'm going to be using for priming is Ultimate Primer White, which is the same as uh, Stino Res. I've been shaking this off camera. Now, uh, normally I put a wee bit of uh, airbrush cleaner in the bottom of my cup. So, it might get a bit noisy because I'm going to be switching on my compressor and my extractor booth. So, I'm just going to blow this airbrush cleaner out my, out my airbrush. You can probably hear the uh, compressor kicking in and out there. I'm just going to take a wee bit of X28 to blow that through. The brush I'm using is an Eyewater Revolution CR. So I'm just making sure it's clean for when I did the um, the last wee bit of paint job. Now I'm going to set the pressure on this. Uh, Stino Res and Ultimate Primer likes to go through a 0.5 or a 0.4 or greater needle. There's a 0.5 in this is standard. The way you set your pressure if you haven't done it before, there's a wee dial on top of your compressor. You hold your button down and you adjust it until it's sitting at the right amount on the gauge and that's you at your, your shooting pressure. I've got a wee cloth on my lap here just to save any any paint spillage or whatever. Now I've got one, two, three, four, five parts to spray but they're very small. Um, with this paint being thick, or this primer I should say, I've already shook it for about 20 minutes off camera, it really doesn't take a lot. Um, and you don't thin this stuff down, you all spray uh, primers neat. So I'm going to put some in my colour cup. Oh, I'm not going to be putting a lot in. Can we see colour cup there? 
I really am not going to be putting a lot in. That'll probably do me. A couple of mil and shutting that off. So I've only got a couple of mil in there. The colour cup. <coughs> I'll put my cap on. Save any mistakes. <coughs> I'm going to put my fan on so it's going to get noisy. And uh, I'm just going to pull the, the primer through. Okay. So, I will actually take the first part of this one. I don't know what you can see, what you can't see. Uh, I'm just going to put a mist coat over it to start with. <coughs> Just to give it something to bite into. And as you can maybe see, it's just only mist in it and no more. I'll go in with a slightly heavier coat, this stuff's dead forgiving. The white is a bit harder to spray because it's a bit thicker than your black and your grey. So I've just took the pressure up just a wee bit more. Normally if your airbrush hisses the paint's too thick, the needle's too small or whatever, so it hisses away like mad at you if it's too thin, uh, too thick. It is going on, it's quite hard to tell because it's white. Starting to get some coverage on it now. Okay. Putting a bit of a wetter coat on now because I want it to do a wee bit of filling if there is any imperfections in there. got a decent coverage on it, I'm going to let it dry, I'm going to let it self level. Um, it does seem to be a bit harder to spray than the black, first time using the white. So I'm going to go off camera and do the rest of the bits and then come back to you. See you in a bit. Back again, right. I have to say I'm not liking the white uh, UMP or Steinol Res primer as much as I like the black. Seems to be a lot thicker to spray. I had to take the pressure up a touch more. Even though I'm shooting through a 0.5, I'm almost on maximum trigger opening before any of the paint starts atomizing. Um, I've got decent coverage. Um, quite hard to tell with the white, but I overdid it on the mud guard, so I'm going to have to do dress up on that. We're not going to get into top coat on that. Um, that's going to need a bit more dress up. Mm, the white just a tad too thick um, if you're sitting at 28 to 30 psi on a 0.5 needle and it's been well mixed and it's kind of struggling to go through the airbrush it's also quite a hard colour to see what you've painted um, not liking that as much as the black so black stein or is yes white stuff mm. I'm going to have to dress, I'm going to have to wait for all these to dry and I'm going to have to dress them up. There are little bits of spatter 
here and there. There are bits where I went a bit too heavy because like nothing was coming out and then all of a sudden whoosh. Um, so yeah, at least that's, that's some more primer on it. I can dress it back and then see where I go from there. Um, so that's that bit for now. See you in a bit. Hiya guys, welcome back to Smooth Workshop. Right, um, all the white bits are primed. Um, looking not too bad, a couple of bits I've got to dress up. If I have to do any further dress up on this and any further spraying on that, I'm going to do that off camera. You're not going to need to see that again. Um, the white ultimate primer, a lot thicker than the black. I had to shoot it at a higher pressure. Um, even though I used Ultimate Airbrush Cleaner uh, to clean it up, took a lot more clean up than the black as well for some reason. Um, I may actually, just as a precaution, um, do a full strip down on my brush. Um, make sure I've got it all out. But I've got some of that sitting in my colour cup just now anyway. Um, you don't need to use a lot of this, and I didn't use a lot of it in the clean up, it just seemed to take a lot more clean up than the black. Ultimate and my actual black ultimate is actually a genuine Steinor Res one with the ultimate sticker put on. Um, so I'm assuming that the, the white ultimate primer is actually Steinor Res, it's just a bit thicker. Um, I was going to go into doing the chrome on the forks, but that might make the video run on a bit long because I, um, I did the supplemental about doing the mirrors. So what I'm going to do is, off camera, I'm going to finally prep these for the top coat, might be a day or so. So I'm ready just for shooting top coat on these. Um, I might do a little bit of dress up on the mirrors. Um, so when I come back in the next video, I will be putting the, the chrome extreme metal on the forks and possibly shooting the top coat. Didn't get as far as where I wanted to go, but that's how it goes with modelling. Um, and also I thought I'd put that mirror thing in there because I found a little tip um, off the of fox. So until the next one, I'll try to keep these this, these in a reasonable bite under an hour. So until the next one, uh, I'll see you later. Terry from Smooth Workshop. Terry, bye.